ESPN's uh, Jeff Darlington reports or reported that before the Dolphins week one game, Tyreek Hill was handcuffed and arrested for careless driving and not wearing his seatbelt. Video footage shows that the officers pushing Hill face down onto the pavement to wrap him in handcuffs. The officer was Danny Torres, who has been with the Miami PD for 27 years and said that Hill was driving 60 miles per hour. Oh, my God, that's fast. He also wrongfully accused Hill of driving without a license. Two other Dolphin players, uh, Calius, uh, Calalius, Calalius uh, Campbell and Janu Smith were also detained by police before the game. Tyreek's agent, uh, Drew Rosenhaus, we all know who he is, said that the officers that did that to Hill should be fired. Hill called out Torres and other officers involved in the police brutality saying that if he wasn't somebody famous, he would have gotten shot or potentially killed. First of all, I got to give, you know, Tyreek Hill a lot of credit because even with all the craziness that happened uh, before the game, he still put up seven receptions, 130 yards and one touchdown and targeted 12 times. So no matter what happened mentally, he still put up pretty good numbers. So thank you to Tyreek Hill. If you're having him in your fantasy league, you should be very happy about that. Um, I think Tyreek Hill has something to be right on this. Okay. I, I first of all, Daniel, Daniel Torres is Puerto Rican, uh, Spanish. So I, I, I don't know if it's racism. I, and I'm not going to get into this racist thing that, you know, you want to go back and forth in. I don't, I don't know what is Dan, what was going through Danny's, uh, Danny Torres's mind when he decided to arrest Tyreek Hill. What I do know is I go 60 miles per hour in a 50 mile per hour speed limit and I don't get pulled over by a cop. Okay? I didn't get pulled over by a cop. I've never gotten pulled over by a cop going 10 miles per hour in a 50 uh, mile per hour speed limit. I, I don't, I, I don't understand it. Now, maybe the police were gunning for him. I, I don't know. And they knew it was Tyree Kill because I'm sure they ran his plates before they pulled him over. And maybe they thought that he was drinking, or maybe they're trying to punish Tyree Kill for all the stupid things he's done in the past. I don't know. What I do know is it's embarrassing when you have a superstar like Tyree Kill and Miami in Miami in, in a place that you know, a lot of people go and visit, a lot of fans go and visit uh, because it's hot, it's beautiful, fake asses, fake you know what. I mean, that's what you want to go. You want to see some naked women, go to Miami, go to the boardwalk. You'll see a bunch of naked women running around, jogging, whatever. That's what you want to see. But Miami football is really taken off. And one of the reasons why is Tyreek Hill. He's a different personality. He's a unique personality, but he's a guy that sells tickets. And when you know it's game day, it's Sunday afternoon, and if Tyreek was going 100 miles per hour, I'd pull him over, I would arrest him, I'd handcuff him. 60 miles per hour, you're going to arrest this guy, slam it to the ground? I don't know what Tyreek Hill was saying. I didn't watch the footage, and I don't want to watch it. Because if it is police brutality, I don't want to watch it. Because it makes me sick to my stomach. But what I do know is, you have to understand when you're a professional athlete, you're a movie star, you're a, you're whatever in in the face of the media. People are gunning for you, and I'm that's even the police. And Tyree Kelly's done a lot of stupid things over the last couple of years. This this is not one of them. I don't think Tyree Kill did anything wrong on here. I don't. There's stupid things that he's done, beating up people on docks and all that other crazy stuff that he's done. I, I agree. He's crazy. He did nothing wrong here. Nothing. Not after what reading all the different stories that I've read between it, I didn't want to watch the video because I probably was going to get sick by watching it. Mm. I know a lot of people watch the video. Who probably down to the pavement. Yeah, it, it looked really, really bad. Mm. And I'm sure Tyree Kill is going to sue the town, sue the city. They she should. I mean, that's embarrassing by itself, but still went out there and put up a, a, a pretty good game for the Miami Dolphins. If you say whatever you want about Tyreek Hill, he's unprofessional. He does stupid things. The one thing I could say about Tyreek Hill is he's a gamer. He shows up to the game and he puts up 
the points and he gets his team involved and he wins football games. So I, I, I don't really have anything more to say about the brutality. I think that they should be fired or reprimanded for what they did. The fact that these things are getting recorded now could only tell you one thing about where the police and where, you know, politics are going when it comes to these situations. But I also believe that I'm not talking about Tyreek Hill, but other guys that think that they like NFL players like Rice speeding 100 miles per hour and almost killing somebody gets away with it because he's an NFL player and he plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Tyreek Hill played for the Kansas City Chiefs. He he did some interesting things when he was in college, um, and he's done some things in the NFL. But honestly, this wasn't a bad thing that he did. I I don't think there was anything wrong that he did. No. So uh, it's a shame to see something like that on on you know as far as TMZ or whatever the hell got the footage. Uh, it's embarrassing for the uh, the police department, and uh, they should be sued. And I think Tyree Kill should definitely drop the hammer. Uh, on Miami and Miami PD. So yeah, absolutely. Like it's excessive force. Like that's always the thing we're we're looking at when it comes to like dis- discipline and anything. Like any type of fr- uh, police, any type of first responders. Like it, that kind of thing. Like you don't have to put his head down on a pavement. Like that's that's excessive at that point to do that. And he wasn't even resisting arrest too. Like all right, if one thing, if you're resisting arrest, you're trying to fight back at them. Like Rasheed Rice fleed the scene. Obviously, <laughs> that they're holding two different instances. Rasheed Rice was driving a hundred plus miles per hour racing. Tyree Kill was driving 60 miles an hour, which people do on the highway all the time, especially in a major city like Miami. Like, you're trying to get to the game. You have two teammates in, like, the car, like, in other cars right next to you in Calais Campbell, who, by the way, is, like, one of the biggest community guys in the world. Like, I think he was a Walter Payton Man of the Year award. He was. He was. Like, he's been a great community guy everywhere he's gone from Arizona to Jacksonville. And then you have John o. Smith, who's always been a good stand-up guy. You have somebody like Tyree Kill. Yes, he's crazy. He says eccentric things. Fine. And, yeah, he, the incident last year with the boating, the boating patrol guy did not look good, but he's a victim here. Like there's no reason this shouldn't have been blown up the way he did. This guy should absolutely be reprimanded. If not fired by the, by this is a 27 year guy. Like you should know this by now. So I watched the film. I, I had to watch it. I, this really bothered me. Now I've, I've been very critical of Tyree kills past on this show in the past, yeah. because he's done some horrible things. He broke a woman's leg doing one-on-ones with her when he was, Try, uh, like her son was there for a camp and he was trying to date her or whatever. And then she actually beat him on a rep. So like he went hard at her and broke her leg that happened. So she sued and got paid that that happened this off season. That's just one of a couple of things. He slapped someone upside the head at the dock. All he did, it was a 60, 60 miles an hour and a 40. I looked it up. He was going 20 over the legal limit. He was driving a Lamborghini weaving in and out of traffic. He was supposed to get pulled over for that. Now here's the thing. After that, the, the way the way we see the footage, he rolls down the window and then rolls it back up partially. And they ask him to roll it back down, and he just rolls it up. At that point, they basically rip him out of the car and put their hands on him in a way that seemed pretty unnecessary and hostile, as the Dolphins said later on. This is way above and beyond anything that it should be for this type of a situation. If you guys, I'm sorry, I'm having a bad echo. But if you guys tell me that I'm going to be driving to the game where I'm the star player, where I'm the one that stir, you know, makes the team win in a town that's got all this money set up for just revenue from tourism, you're trying to tell me we're going to go after this guy. The guy that's our cash cow, that's like killing the golden goose. So you have a couple of chicken cutlets for the night. No, I like some so, chicken You know what I mean? Like, what are you what doing? Do you some chicken cutlets. I need some. You go to Tommy DeVito's house. No, I don't. I don't want Tommy's. It, it, it was just that. disturbing. And I'll leave it at that because we, we need to make sure that we don't get too political with this. And I understand why people could say that. Tyreek Kell did something wrong. It just, it just is, is how you handle it. Police should not be putting their hands on people. And, of course, there's always going to be a racial element when you have something like that, whether or not the officer is black or white. It's just going to always be like that in today's day and age. And Miami police need to be a little bit smarter than this. Again, this goes to my old theory. If something stupid's happening, it's probably in Florida. 
Well, I will say this, and, and by the way, I hear a little bit of the echo. Uh, we'll figure that out. But uh, I have to say, Miami had a great – they didn't start off very strong, but at, they definitely finished strong. No question, because they were down at one point 17-7, to and they came roaring back, and it really had a lot to do with Tua. Everybody wants to – they want to take shots and say that this guy isn't a good quarterback, and he, he wasn't worth the money that he got. All right, I'll tell you somebody that wasn't worth the money that he got, and that's Trevor Lawrence. 12 for 21, 162 yards and one touchdown. Yeah, Jeff, I've said this many, many times. I don't think he's worth what he's getting paid, $55 million. He did not show up in the second half. I'll tell you who did show up in the second half. 23 for, 23 for 37, 338 yards, one touchdown, and that's Tua Tagovailoa. He was the one that showed up in the second half and won that game for his team. I don't care what anybody says with the defense, and, and 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 Miami's defense might not be that good, but guess what? They showed up in this game, especially in the second half, and shut down the Jacksonville Jaguars. And and I don't know what Jacksonville is doing, but why wasn't Christian Kirk being brought into this offense? I saw Gabe Davis. I've seen a lot of Brian Thomas. Christian Kirk had one reception for 30 yards. One reception. He had 30 yards in the game. He was open a lot. Why wasn't? Our friend Trevor Lawrence throwing him the ball because I don't know what the hell he was doing. One reception for 30 yards. 30 yards on one reception. Yes, he was targeted four times. That's not enough. He's your number one wide receiver. Number one. I think Evan Engram just caught his first pass in the third quarter or something. I like just that. don't understand it. I don't understand it. And Travis Etienne, okay? And oh. I'm being very honest here. And I love you, Travis. You're a guy that I draft every year. And you had one touchdown. Could you please, for once in a game, when they need you, show up? I, I mean, seriously, what is going on with this guy? I, did, I just, did you see it, though, Errol? They benched him. I was watching it as I know, it happened. I know. I know. I understand. And I'm sad, you, like a, like the, the saddest expression I've seen on an NFL player's face in the longest time. He just sat by himself on the bench for the whole second half of the game because the next play – after he fumbled the ball, walking into the end zone, just fumbled the ball through the end zone. They get it back on the 20, 80 yards to Tyree Kill on a sale route to the corner. And that's why Hill had the big numbers. It was really mostly that play. But Hill's Hill, that's how good he is. Mm -hmm. You, you got to understand that that's the kind of team you have. And, and it's unbelievable that they took advantage of that mistake by Etienne <laughs> that fast. It, it was like the moment I've never seen – uh, I should say I've never seen, but it's one of those like epic, like change momentums that you just don't see very often. Whereas a 14 point swing like that quick, the game was over. It felt like if they, when they wa were walking into the end zone, they were up two scores. Trevor Lawrence should not be making 55 million a year. I'm sorry. I, I'm just speaking the truth. I think Trevor Lawrence for everybody. And I remember Keith texting me as like, Trevor Lawrence is going to have a great year. He looks like he's the real deal. Really? He looks like the real deal. He looks sucky. OK, he is not the real deal. I do not believe Trevor Lawrence is anything what anybody thought he was going to be. And Travis Etienne, who I still think could have a good year for you to pull him out the way you did. And Doug Peterson pulled him out, uh, says one thing is, is that they don't believe that Travis Etienne in a big game could make the plays or even make plays to figure things out. And they just said, you know what? You made a mistake. We're going to sit you out. And if you do it again, you, you might be sitting out for the rest of the season. You're not going to be starting. So it, it, that's embarrassing. And if I was Travis Etienne, I would figure out my woes as far as I'm concerned as a running back, as a star running back that everybody expected or still expects to have a good season. So that's my thought to that. Mike Tomlin announced that Justin Fields will start for the Steelers again in week two because Russell Wilson has a calf injury. Tomlin called Fields a steady and uh, I'm sorry, I would say reliant quarterback facing a lot of pressure in week one versus the Falcons. Rex Ryan says that the decision of the Steelers is simple because you could be looking at a superstar if Justin Fields hits his peak. Steelers report. A reporter, Mark uh, Cabo, uh, Caboli, right, uh, said that Pat McAfee show on the Pat McAfee show that Russell Wilson was pouting on the sidelines, sidelines like he was unhappy he wasn't playing. Adam Schefter said that on the Pat McAfee show that he still expects Russell Wilson uh, to start in his return with his 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 calf injury when he gets better. Fields was seventeen. Of 23 passing, 156 yards, uh, a touchdown, a 
and a, and had a 14 carries for 57 yards in the Steelers week one win against the Falcons. First of all, okay, and there's a lot, and I know we uh, Jason's going to be waiting. I, I just want to get into this uh, one thing because I have a lot to say about the Steelers, but I'm going to try to add this in for the next six to seven minutes uh, before we get our, our guest on. I, here's the quick, quick understanding of what happened in week one. The Steelers defense is for real. Okay. This defense is probably going to be, if not the best defense in football, top three defense in football. They always are. Adding Queen to this defense, uh, this is an explosive defense. And TJ Watt is, is just a sensational player. Justin Fields is enough to get this team to the Super Bowl. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't care about Russell Wilson and pouting on the sidelines. This guy could help them get to the Super Bowl if they just develop him. This is something the Chicago Bears could not do. This guy has all the intangibles to be a good quarterback. He really does. He can run. He's strong. He's big. He can throw the ball. He doesn't need to throw it 300 yards. He can throw it 200, 220. Look, Rex Grossman went to the Super Bowl, and he's nowhere close to the talent. Nowhere close to the talent of Justin Fields. They need to develop this kid. They need to build confidence. Keep him on the field. If you're winning, you keep him out there. I don't want to hear Russell Wilson when he gets better, he's going to get back on the football field. I don't want to hear that because to me, that tells me that Russell Wilson is teaching or not teaching, running this organization or telling the organization, if I don't play, I'm going to pout. Right now, the fact is, Justin Fields has a chance to really become something special in this league. And now I know everybody says it's nothing to brag about in his numbers. I mean, if you look at the numbers, there's nothing that stands out to me to say, oh, Justin Fields, superstar, well, bust. What I can tell you about Justin Fields is he's a gamer. He goes out there, puts his body on the line week by week. 17 for 23, pretty good. 156 yards. He didn't, you know, blow up the scoreboard. But half the quarterbacks in week one didn't do that. What he does well, 14 carries for 57 yards. And he's going to do that every single week. Russell Wilson is not the same player he was when he played for Seattle. He's not. He doesn't have what Justin Fields has. Justin Fields could run a 4-4. You think Russell Wilson could do that? I'm going to tell you this right now. This defense is enough. If you remember, Ben Roethlisberger, in his first year as a Steeler, they went to the Super Bowl. That was the second year. Second year, I'm sorry. His second year, his first full year as the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he went to the Super Bowl and won, and he didn't even have to put up crazy numbers. He didn't. Be Why? Because their defense was good, and their running game is elite. I don't know about you guys, but when you have Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and Cordell Patterson on this team, you don't need to be a star wide receiver. You don't need to be a star quarterback to win. This defense is for real, for real. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If they stay healthy, oh, my God. They're going to put up crazy numbers. I know because I had them on my, two of my fantasy teams. They're pretty, they're pretty damn good. I mean, in one of fantasy league, they had 17, 18 points. The other one, they had 14. And they helped me win, baby. And that's all I'm going to say. So I, I'm just speaking the truth here. You can win with Justin Fields. You can win. Keep Russell Wilson off the field. Stop with this. Oh, he's pouting. He's crying. Well, let him hang out with Ciara. Let him get his money, his free money from the Broncos. And if they win a Super Bowl, he gets a free ring again. And that's two Super Bowl rings, which he should have won years and years ago. Yeah, quickly before we get our guest on, you don't need quarterback turnover if you don't need any reason to. Justin Fields did not play bad. Like, okay, his stats aren't eye-popping, 156 yards. And yes, Carl in the comment section said, better learn how to find the second read. I'm not saying Justin Fields doesn't have some flaws, but he has no reason for them to take him out yet. He didn't throw three interceptions. He didn't get sacked seven times, and he ran back. Did they win? One. Did they win? I don't even care about wins and losses. Like, if they Did didn't they stay. win? They're in a division that they're not expected to win. Some people don't even have them coming out of that division. Did they win? Did they win the game? Did Baltimore win? No. Nope. Did the Bengals win? Definitely not. Did Cleveland win? 
No. I rest my case. They won. They got a W. So, Carl, I know you hate Justin Fields. I hope you enjoyed Caleb Williams because he didn't look too good throughout that game. That's the first quarterback in his first game to not really throw a touchdown in a game and still win. And I'm going to tell you, I love Caleb Williams. Love Caleb Williams. But for anybody to come out there and pick on this kid for showing up to the game and doing what he did in the game where he wasn't expected to play speaks volumes to what he can be if you develop him. And Chicago couldn't, and Mr. Eberflus couldn't. And tell me, I, I'm sorry, Carl, we haven't gotten into Chicago, and we will a little bit a little bit later in the show after our next guest. I, what did Chicago do with Eberflus uh, when it came to making and, and, and showing up to games, especially I, the defense played good. Did the offense really play well? I don't know about that. So I don't know. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I mean – Fish, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just just real quickly, it's this is absolutely the worst thing that happened for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson could not let someone else start getting the favorability in the locker room. Justin Fields, already younger, just as cheap, could could be kept for the long term when nobody really wants him. He's more popular. It, you could see all the writing on the wall. Even as long as they win with Fields, he has, I mean, they had six field goals in that game. You know, so it's it's not like he's lighting it up offensively. You don't need to have great offensive games. You can win without putting up numbers. And you're going to tell me Justin Fields all season long is just going to put 156. He's going to run in two touchdowns, three touchdowns. He's going to do that. He is he's a great, great athletic talent. If he just figures it out, and if there's anybody that can develop somebody, it's Mike Tomlin. Uh, he didn't. Develop his We're on the same play. page, Errol. I completely agree. And I wanted to see if I can get some six-year-old memories, if my math's right, Speedy, of a team that did this with Trent Dilfer, a quarterback, against our New York Giants in the yeah. Super Bowl, which was the great Baltimore Ravens, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed defense. And they Trent Dilfer was just a, like the definition of a game manager. Fields controls the ball. No reason why they can't go really far this year and just use him and just be smart. With just him. keep him in, please. It, it, stop with this Russell Wilson crap. I don't want to hear about Russell Wilson anymore. It, it, it's just it's alarming to me when when you have a young quarterback that you can develop and you can build into this offense for many, many years to come. That's just my thing. When we come back, I know he's been waiting. We're very happy to have him. Uh, it's the first time. I think this is the first time on our show. Ex 11 year NFL tight end, Kentucky State assistant coach Jason Dunn. This is the Sports Loud Mouth. 631 672 3108 is the number to call. You're listening to the Sports Loud Mouth. I'm your host, Errol Marks. My caller, Speedy. Speedy, go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Check out all our shows throughout the week, including the Loud Mouth with me and Speedy Petey every single Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. All you have to do to tune in and check out our local listings for all our shows. Go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. And this segment and this interview is brought to you by StubHub. All you have to do to go to StubHub and get all the different opportunities to go to concerts and games and get a percentage off 10 to 15% every single concert or game ticket. Well, you go to our website. You go to www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Hit our link, and you will get all those percentages. I mean, you can go to games right now. There are Kansas City Chief games and tickets that you can get for about 50 bucks. And this is the Super Bowl champions, back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships. And you can get percentages off those tickets. All you have to do to go to our website is www.worldwidesportsradio.com. A guy that's not going to go to a Kansas City Chiefs game or, you know, and if he wants to, I mean, we can go together. Uh, we're now talking to ex-11-year NFL tight end and Kentucky State assistant coach for the first time on the Sports Loudmouth, Mr. Jason Dunn. Speedy, come on, clap. <laughs> I clap for myself. I'll put some claps here for me. <laughs> What's up, fellas? What's going on? What's going on man? I, know you've been waiting. I know you've been waiting, and it, it's, you've never been on the Loudmouth, so this is the first time for you. So get ready to laugh and have a little bit of fun with us. This is not just one of those normal interviews. We will have some fun with you, but – Nevertheless, yeah. I mean, you look good, man. You look like you could still play in the NFL. I mean, there are quite a few teams that could use you. One of them are the Chiefs. I mean, I'm just kidding. The Chiefs, you know, maybe the Eagles do. I, you know, two teams that are fantastic that could be in the Super Bowl again, once again this year. I mean, Absolutely. who's better than you, man? Who's better than you? 
Dude, listen, I, I, I'm I'm enjoying it. I, I enjoyed it a, a couple of years ago when the Chiefs and the Eagles came into it and played the Super Bowl. And so yeah. everybody was asking me, well, who are you going for? Who 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 you, who you thinking about going? I said, look, I said, you see this house right here? They said, yeah. I said, this is Kansas City money, okay? So <laughs> y'all here for the party? This is where we're going to. But, you know, I'm, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Chiefs guy through and through. I got still got a lot of uh, – uh, uh, affiliation with with philadelphia and i love them the fans up there so everything man has been a great ride you know every bit of it and so you can see some of these man this is this is when i was in my heyday when i was stretching the field you mm. know so you know that that uh that four four uh five man was real speed back then that's what i was running i had i had that type of speed so uh but yeah man this this right here this ride that's going on right now with the kansas city chiefs dude it's gonna be a beautiful thing and you're talking about the Eagles, that man, look, they they got a stack, a stack deck as well. So should be pretty interesting. Should be pretty interesting to watch you know, this you, thing. You know, you mentioned stretching. I mean, there's one quarterback that likes to stretch things, and that's uh, you know, Deshaun Watson. What are your thoughts to that? <laughs> <laughs> uh crazy. I think it's absolutely crazy. Dude, I'm sitting over here trying to do the timeline. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Did all, all, all of this come out? When he got first caught, and then all of a sudden he did it again. Is this? Am I correct? Is this? It was part of it. It was never revealed until now. Apparently, I mean, he's long. doing it in restaurants now. I mean, who's better than him? I mean, who's who? Hey. And laying on different couches and beds. I mean, I it's, uh, maybe him and Robert Kraft should hang out. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. That's funny you say that because so the thing is, <laughs> when I see Robert Kraft, you know, talk to uh, uh, the coach, you know, after they won the game, he comes in. I'm like, look at Robert Kraft. I said a few months ago they just caught this joker down there in uh was in Tampa somewhere, you know, Ebor City. Yeah. So, you know, trying to get a trying to get a happy ending. But, you know, hey, I don't know, man. You know, this is what guys do. Yeah, That's well, funny. That's funny I, right I, there. I like to get a happy ending too from you know any one of those uh, any one of those guys if they give me I give them a happy happy ending. Whatever they're whatever he's getting paid or he's paying these girls. I pay me. I'll give you a happy ending. I'll just wear a blindfold so I have to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. You can keep well, that money. You know, <laughs> I might I, I might have to wear a blindfold if I if I ever talk about this again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, I, look, I, I heard the conversation before then, what you were talking about with the Justin Fields and mm -hmm. Russell Wilson debate, man. I, and look, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know, the thing is, I just could not understand why Chicago wanted to move on from Justin Fields. Now, obviously, I don't think a lot of it was his fault. He had some bad offensive coordinators. The whole offensive, you know, side was just terrible. It was horrible. And I don't think they did enough to 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 build around him. All of a sudden, you get rid of him, and all of a sudden, you start bringing in the weapons, right? And it was like, well, shoot, Caleb Williams should be <laughs> – he should be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, he got everybody needs around him. So – I, I just think, man, that Justin Fields is a talent. I think if you stay patient with him and you do develop him, he's going to be a crazy guy, man, in this league. He's going to be a crazy guy in this league. Uh, the one that you shown where he threw to uh, to Pickens down there in the corner, the corner route, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful ball. It's a beautiful ball. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, Ra the Raiders now have their offensive coordinator, Luke Getz. You saw how well off their offense played against the oh worst God. defense in the NFL last year. Yeah, yeah, that – Dude, I'm telling you, some of these coaches are being regurgitated to teams, and I just don't understand how they still get jobs. For real. Seriously, I'm going to be honest with you. But this is what this guy. I like to yeah, regurg. He... <laughs> <laughs> but this is what Justin Fields can do. He can do this. This, 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 is, this, is, this is it's right in his wheelhouse, man. Oh, it's right in, in his wheelhouse. wheelhouse. Just stay away from Deshaun Watson. That might be in his wheelhouse, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they have to play twice a year, so that might not go over well. So, Jason, speaking of uh, speaking of crazy, uh, you played with a coach that's uh, been crazy in the past, uh, Herm Edwards, when you were with the Chiefs uh, towards the end of your career. He's a uh, play to win the game. Obviously, that mantra of that's so what was he like on and off the field as a head coach and as a person? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what, man, Herm uh, to me, uh, you know, he's he's color commentary. He's a good coach. He's a good guy. Uh, but I think with him, man, that, that's he wanted all the glitz and the glamour. I think that's what he's he, what he's doing now. Is it fits perfectly for him. Uh, but you know, the thing is, uh, he came down from the Jets, came to Kansas City, and it was just it was a little bit different than what guys are used to. And so, 
Uh, but but Herm is he, he you know former player. He understands how to you know connect with guys. He knows how to talk to guys. Uh, but as far as one of the things that I will say this, okay, I don't think I'm, I'm saying anything that, but when he came into our offensive, you know, offense meeting room, he told us that we score points too fast. That's what he told us. So before he got in there, we were like one of the top teams in the league that was scoring points. We were like, you know, had, you know, one of the best offenses. And so his philosophy was whoever had the ball last at the end of the game was going to win. That's how he wanted to do it. And so we just weren't used to it. We were just used to just putting points up on folks. That was it. When you had Priest Holmes, Larry Johnson, those guys just running down your throat, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're throwing the ball up the field to Gonzalez and Eddie Kennison and, you know, Johnny Morton, those guys, Dante Hall. I mean, shoot, why, why do you want to slow a machine like that down? So I just didn't quite understand that part of it. But, uh, but yeah. Well, you know, and by the way, we are talking to ex-11-year NFL tight end and Kentucky State assistant coach Jason Dunn. You know, the tight end position is so very interesting. And, and when you played, it wasn't really an important position. It was a position uh, blocking and, you know, you used wide receivers, but uh, wide receivers as tight ends at some points of the game. But there weren't like superstar guys. Then you see guys like Jason Witten. Then you see Tony Gonzalez. There was Tony Gonzalez. You played with Tony Gonzalez. I'm not going to yeah. lie, but. Uh, the position really started to develop, and now it's such an important position. Now you look at the league, you got Travis Kelsey, you got this Laporta kid. All these guys are starting to develop, and, and now you're seeing these guys run a 4 4 4 5 tight ends doing this. I mean, it's incredible, the style of game, and it's changed. Now you've seen tight ends make money. What is the difference when you played and now the way the game has changed up and transitioned into the tight end, how important that position is now? I, I think it really has to do with the scheme. You know, so now teams are looking for matchups. And so offensively, if you're looking for a big guy that can run, that can get open, and, you know, he's a matchup nightmare for the linebackers, safeties, uh, you put him out there on a the DB, he's, he's, he's catching balls. So uh, Gonzalez was doing that back then when we, yeah. were, we were out there, right? And so you're talking about him, we're talking about Gatesy, uh, you know, you said Witten. So mm -hmm. there was guys that was going out there that was catching up the tons of passes. The thing is, we just didn't pass the ball like, like they do now. They're throwing the ball everywhere. And so – when you got Patrick Mahomes is throwing, you know, 40, you know, balls a game. I think we've seen Bo Nix. He threw like 40-some passes this past week, right? Sure, he he 45. <laughs> <laughs> I like 24. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know, the, but, the, but the tight end, it just really transitioned because now you have guys who are not really doing the dirty work as far as the blocking. And you're doing that's fine because you want more of a spread offense. You want to open the door up a little bit more. But also, too, I think that it's changed a little bit with the running backs. Like I said, we had pre Jones, we had Larry Johnson. Now you got more of these kind of scat backs that's going out there to catch passes in the backfield or, you know, out there in, the, in, in you know, five or ten yards away. And so, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, and, and Travis Kelsey, man, they, they're on the, the same wavelength, man. They, they, they're doing some things out here that's never been done before as far as, like, with the quarterback and tight end. Uh, these two guys are best friends, and it translates on the field. It really does. And so when you start seeing that, what, what, what Travis has been doing, then you talk about Laporta, then you talk about Mark Andrews. I mean, we talk about Isaiah Likely, right? Isaiah Likely right now. And I said, Isaiah Likely, mm -hmm. he is a wide receiver playing tight end. That's what it is. And so you're not really asking guys to go in and, and hit a guy like Strahan and, you know, in the face anymore, okay? And so you're looking for like smaller linebackers, you know, the pass rushers. Those are the guys that you're going to be going against more so than anything else. But this opens up the field. That's that's exactly what it is, man. But you know, Travis right now, man, is just killing everybody. Yeah, I want to ask about like to a lesser extent the uh, the wide receiver tight end hybrid draft prospects we've seen recently. Mm. Um, Kyle Pitts was obviously the big one a couple of years ago. To a lesser extent, Trey McBride, but he's still turned out to be a nice player with Arizona. And then yeah. this year, Brock Bowers got a lot of hype, obviously with the Raiders or rivals of your Chiefs. But do you think that yep. kind of thing, especially with the wide receiver contracts we've seen this offseason, maybe could become more of a trend where they're playing more of these hybrid type players? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, I wanted Brock Bowers. I thought Brock Bowers would have been the heir apparent to a Travis Kelsey to me. But, you know, you had to move up in the draft to go get a Brock Bowers. That was the thing about it. Uh, but you've you seen it. You've seen, you know, when 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 Graham was out there, it was things that, that that guys needed to do. Winslow Jr. And so when you start looking for more sleeker guys that can kind of get open and run routes like wide receivers, this is just going to open up your 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 whole game. So you see right here, Brock Bowers, man. I mean, he's just making guys miss, man. He, he he's incredible. He's incredible. 
So uh, he's just a guy that you got to contend with. And we've seen, you know, everybody talks about linebackers and, oh, these linebackers can't cover and stuff like that. Well, i tell you what, you take your chance and your shot to cover guys like this, okay, <laughs> just coming out there and see how you do, right? And so it's going to be a difficult. This is a difficult task for linebackers and, of course, on safeties. But you definitely will see this, this hybrid type of deal uh, another one, Gaseki. Gaseki ain't gonna block nobody. He ain't gonna block. He ain't gonna put his hand on nobody to crush his rake. <laughs> he ain't gonna do it. He's not. But he's gonna go out there. He's gonna be sleek. He's gonna catch the football. So uh, that's just where everything is just transitioning to, uh, as far as on offenses. So that's I think guys are looking at that right now in college. So if you if you're a tight end, they ain't really looking for you to put your hand in the dirt and go hit somebody dead in the mouth. They don't want that anymore. There's no question. We are talking ex 11 year NFL tight end and Kentucky State assistant coach Jason Dunn. First time on our show. We're very happy to have him on. I know he's a busy man. It's during the football season over here at Division One football. Uh, but, you know, it's so interesting when you look at the game and, and we talk about college sports and, and college football and how it, you know, stepping on an, a college field and going to the NFL, two different sports, uh, the speed of the game is just so much different in the NFL. And some of these quarterbacks and some of these players don't develop. They're first-round draft picks. They're expected to be superstars, and they're just not the same player. Everybody expects them. Trevor Lawrence being one of them. Everybody was comparing him to Andrew Locke and Peyton Manning. And he just hasn't really developed into that player yet. Now it could happen. I disagree. I don't think he will, but that's just my opinion. But what is it? What makes the college game so different from the NFL? <laughs> okay. All right. Part of the difference is this. They've dumbed down the game so much in college. Okay. That's part of the problem. And Tom Brady, I think he alluded to this. He talked about this a lot. Yeah. And he was saying that the guys are not necessarily getting prepared when they go out there for playing in the NFL. So when you see in college these offenses that is being ran, they hold up signs all the time, tell guys what you need to do, who to throw to, your first and second key, and that's it. And so that's I think they're doing them a disservice. That's part of the problem. And so they're making it a lot easier in college, right, because everybody likes seeing the points. And well, that's why you see games 60, 70 points. There's no defense, okay, because it's all about scoring points. But what, uh, what, you, what you're also doing with the quarterback is you're trying to tell him what to do and you're dumbing him down. So that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. So when he comes up to the NFL, he's not going against a guy that is taking, you know, uh, I don't know, political oh, science, God. major, right? <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't going against a guy like that. We're talking about a guy back here who's trying to eat, who's trying to earn $20 million a year, okay? He's trying to eat your lunch. That's what this is all about. And so if you try to throw one and lock that out there to him, uh, certain, uh, uh Sauce Gardner, those guys are going to take it the other way. That's what they're going to do. And so that, that's part of the problem. And so when I sit there and I watch these quarterbacks, right, and everybody looks good, but nobody's putting their time and the work and the effort to learn the game like they should. And this is going from coming from one of the greats, like a Tom Brady. You know what I mean? So I think it has a lot to do with it. I really do. So uh, somebody that's making a lot of headlines in college football this offseason has been Deion Sanders with a lot oh, of his uh, controversial We love comments. him. <laughs> Obviously, somebody that started at a, at a JUCO school. You coach at a JUCO school now with Kentucky State. And uh, mm -hmm. he started there, went undefeated. But now at Colorado, all he wants to do is make headlines and uh, cross controversy and have, get his son involved. So what are your thoughts with the, uh, I guess, the enigma Deion Sanders has had in college football? All right. So, so I, I coached, I was coaching at a Division II school, you know, <laughs> HBCU. Which uh, he was doing so down there in, in, in Jacksonville uh, or Jackson State. <clears throat> I do believe that when he took on the task to coach over at Colorado, I think he had a plan about what he wanted to do. Now, you can get all the fast cars around you, right? You can have all the shiny toys and whatnot. But if nobody's back there to protect his son, to save his life, that should have been the first thing he went to go do to get somebody to block for him. Okay. Go get a Travis Henry. Yeah. He's, I mean, this guy's incredible, but then all of a sudden you see him and he don't even want, you know, he don't want to talk, tackle anybody, you know, so you could go both ways, man, but you, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you got a responsibility there. So I think a lot of it goes into, look, you gotta get some guys, man, get some guys up front. That's going to be some dogs. It's a shame that you have a guy like Warren Sapp there as a defensive tackle. I know he's ready to smack everybody in the defensive line room. I know he is. He probably wouldn't line everybody up and just say, put your face right here. <clears throat> Let me smack you. You move on. 
Next oh, guy up, Mac, move on. Yeah, it just, you know, because they should have never got beat by Nebraska. Them getting beat by Nebraska, man, just shows how far they need to go. So I don't know if it's just something that the coaching is not translating or the guys are not getting it. But I do know that offensive line, man, looked like a sieve uh, the, the, other, the other week, you know, against them. So they want to get that back and put it together. You know, speaking of coaching, Dabo Sweeney, who has a big mouth, Nick Saban over the last two years complaining about the portal and the money that these players are making. I mean, the crying, but these guys are making tens of millions of dollars. Uh, Jim Harbaugh deciding, hey, you know what? I didn't, you know, I, I don't know what the hell happened in Michigan. I'm going to the Chargers. I don't want to deal with this crap. Same thing with Pete Carroll. I mean, these guys, they know how to jump ship as quick as they possibly can because they don't yeah, want to yeah. deal with the consequences. Um, I, I, I don't know what is going on with football, college football, but these coaches are making a lot of money. Why should the players be making money? It doesn't make any sense. And as far as the portals are concerned, if if guys like Deion Sanders is getting 60 people to go through the portals, they could do the same thing. I don't want to hear the crybaby antics. Am I right or wrong on that? You're right. You're 100% right. 100% correct. And the thing is, what's disappointing about it, uh, as much as, uh, of, uh, of, that I respect uh, Nick Saban uh, and, and Dabo, I did hear nothing but crying. That's what it was. And so all of a sudden, what ha- ended up happening is the NIL started leveling up the playing field. So now guys can go other places. Now you, you don't really have carte blanche over these guys. Okay. You can come in and hold a, a, a scholarship over a guy's head, but now the guy's making about a million dollars a year, almost $5 million a year. What are you going to say to a guy like that? And so I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any type of regulation. But I think as a coach, your job is to get guys prepared and to get them ready. And so I think Nick, Nick Saban kind of stepped away from it when he had a chance and opportunity to actually show the challenge that he could have had being in Alabama, right? Hey, Nick, guess what? Everybody gets good players now, okay? Let's see how great of a coach you are. Let's see. So that's the only thing I had about it, man. So when everybody was sitting there saying like, oh, man, these guys shouldn't get paid that type of money, why shouldn't they? If Nick Saban is sitting over there making $15 million a year and Dabo's making 13 or 14, how come these kids shouldn't get paid? They're the ones putting their life on the line. Those, those are the guys out there playing, you know, for it. They're the ones that's making all the money for the universities. So I I just when people talk about that, they miss me with that one. Okay. Like I said before, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any type of regulation, because I think I do believe they should. And also, too, when we talk about guys that leaving from portal to portal to place to place then, yeah, there should maybe be a penalty there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy, you go somewhere, then you got to hold out a year, okay? I think it changes things a little bit because what ends up happening, everybody's a merc. They're mercenaries, okay? <laughs> I spit it, I'm going over there. That's what's happening. So instead of doing things like that, at least have some guy have some type of loyalty to a program, let him understand how you develop yourself with a particular team, and then, you you know, you try to make your way. That's how you earn your money. That's the way I look at it, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Deion Sanders doing what he always does, opening his big mouth and and kissing Nick Saban's rings. Oh, Nick Saban, he's so great. Me, 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 me. And then when it comes down to it, he's doing the same thing or the thing that Nick Saban doesn't like. And Nick Nick Saban has more rings than Deion Sanders has won games at Colorado. It's such crap. It, these guys stop kissing each other's ass and then going and saying the opposite of one one play, one coach doing another thing that the other coach is doing. It is ridiculous. It's so it, it's ludicrous. That's just my opinion. Anyway. So let me ask you this, man. Do, do you feel do you feel like there's anything wrong with the whole whole portal on itself? Do you do you have any type of uh, criticism on any of that, my man, or what? Uh, you know that's a good question. But you know what? If if you don't like it, well, find a way to critique it. And stop sitting there and complaining that players. I mean, Caleb Williams made five million dollars in college football last year. Okay, he also yeah. cried on the field about three or four times, which was pretty funny. So if 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 that's what's selling him product and that's what's bringing him sponsors, I'll cry too. You want me to cry on this show? Only the sponsors can come to me. <laughs> oh, this guy's getting this, and that guy's getting that. <laughs> Listen, if it's going to pay me, I'll cry every single day. I'll take a gump on the show if, it, if it's going to bring me some sponsors that's going to make me millions and millions of dollars. So cry me a river. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If you look at the game of football as a whole, and especially college football for what it is, college football is growing. 
I mean, the TV deals that is going uh, going into these, you know, different, you know, you know, these different uh, uh, programs and everything like that. There's a lot of be, there's a lot of money to be made. So yeah. me, I don't care if these players are jumping from one ship to the other. If you want these players to stay, Deion Sanders, especially stop putting them down. Stop saying that your sons are so damn great. And by the way, Shador Sanders, as much as everybody loves him and he's a first round draft pick. Whoever drafts him, I'm going to tell you this right now, he's a bust. He is an absolute bust. Enjoy yourselves. If for the Giant fans that you want Shador Sanders or whoever is next to get Shador Sanders as a top first-round draft pick, go ahead, get him, take him, and you can take Dion with him. It's never going to work. He's not a good pro quarterback. I've seen enough of him. Give me a break. I'll put a fork in him. That's all I'm going to say. I'm talking about accountability. He after That's the all I'm Nebraska gave me through his offensive line under the and boss. Yeah, what a people, leader. And for all the people. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And, and yeah. by the way, Jason, just so everybody knows, we are talking, and obviously, if you don't know him, we are talking to ex 11 year NFL tight end and Kentucky State assistant coach Jason Dunn. First time on our show. And, and this is the first time, and we love it. He, he is just out there and telling us what he feels. And that's the way we want people to be. I will say this I sit here every day and every time I come on this show. And I speak the truth. And people don't like it on social media. They attack me, say I'm a hater. I hate Deontay. I'm racist. How does this make me racist? Because I'm speaking the truth. I I love Deion Sanders as a player. I yeah, loved him yeah. as a football player. He was sensational. Probably, I still think Darrell Revis is better than him. That's just my opinion. I am a Jet fan. But mm-hmm. nevertheless, Deion Sanders is one of the greatest at what he did. But I will say this. How many father to son becomes a superstar when they step on an NFL field. It usually doesn't happen. So for anybody to think that Shador Sanders has the ability that his father had, I don't know if anybody's seen Deion Sanders play. He is a unique, unique player. And as as a quarterback, you know this, Jason, more than anything. You need to be the smartest guy in the field. Let me ask you a question. Deion Sanders doing what he did as far as his son is concerned after beating up a security guard and telling him to claim bankruptcy and this guy doesn't have a job, can't walk straight for the rest of his life, tells me that Deion Sanders not only is dumb, but his son, he's teaching his son the dumb way to handle things. That is not professional. That doesn't make any sense. And it's wrong. And that's all I'm going to say. It was wrong for what Deion Sanders told his son to do. And and I think that he should look himself in the mirror and realize that you're teaching boys, not men. And that's why you don't want to be in the NFL because you don't want to deal with the men because you don't want to deal with millions and millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, but you got a lot of valid points. You, you really do. I, 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 you know, to, to be honest with you, I do believe that he, he does handle Shador with kick gloves. And I do believe that he gives him, you know, a little bit of privilege and gives him an out when he should be holding him accountable more than anybody else, right? As your son, which I know he gets on. I'm not sure he says things to him, but it just doesn't seem like it resonates with him, especially when you you say you come out there to the media and you're throwing your whole offensive line under the bus, yeah. right? Or how you carrying yourself, right? Or is it a good look to be driving around, you know, uh, uh, whatever car that you got in front of your teammates, and make it like you're you're holier than thou. You're bigger than everybody else. And so I, I do believe that there should be a better way handling than that. Uh, and, and, you know, that's me. That's my fault, opinion-wise. Uh, but I, I think some, somehow um, the narrative is being pushed that he's a first-round pick. You know, they're throwing him out there, as a son should do, right? As a father should do for his son. Like, hey, man, look, I'm a, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I mean, what else is he supposed to say? He's going to say what? He's, he's, a, he's the worst thing out there, right? The thing is, he's, he's got to go out there week in and week out, and he's got to show it. And so sometimes you got to do it with decorum. You got to do it with coop. You got to be able to, the way that you walk to people, you know, you got to command attention. You got to have leadership and responsibility. Those things are important. Those are important. And so it does seem like sometimes they abscond responsibility when you're putting other people under the bus and you're sitting there saying, well, it wasn't really my fault. Okay, it was somebody else's fault and somebody else needed to get their game together. Well, what about your accountability? What did you do wrong? Okay, if you're learning from Tom Brady, Tom Brady's coming to help you out. Some of that shit should have rubbed up on you how Tom Brady is and how he handles things. Okay, there's a balance there. And so I think a lot of that, man, is just 
it seemed like there's a lot of arrogance and ego, which we know what's Dion. Dion's got he's he's egotistical, right? But he's great. He backs it up. That's why he called him prime. He was prime time. Okay. He's one dude, if he talk noise to you, he can back it up for sure. Sometimes we see now, some, sometimes kids and everybody out here right now are talking a lot of smack, man. They just can't back it up. I'm sorry. I, so, I, I think he's more more prime rib now. <laughs> <laughs> Say prime rib. <laughs> oh, that's way too generous. <laughs> you like those prime rib burgers over that Miller's Ale House? I do. And the outsiders is nowhere near that level either. <laughs> Look, but so, so, so I'm, I'm sitting there saying this, right? So, so Dion has a chance and opportunity, okay? Mm -hmm. You kind of write this ship, okay? And the first thing you should go out there to the media and say, I'm going to hold my son accountable for some of his bad play. I'm going to hold my son accountable for talking about his offensive line like this. That's not a leader. That's not the way he should act. So if you pro you're supposed to be a first round pick and I'm I'm propping you up as that, okay? You got to carry yourself that way. I got to carry yourself that way. So I don't know what that's got to what it needs to be done, but I tell you this: if you don't win, he ain't gonna be a first round pick. That's bottom line. That's the way it works. Pure and simple. Well, knowing that there's not many quarterbacks in this class, and what they're saying about and everybody's like blowing this kid up like he's the next thing. So like you said, since sliced bread. But guess what? I I don't like sliced bread. I like cheese and. Uh, my cheese is I like Gouda and he doesn't taste like Gouda. So in my opinion, he's a third round draft pick. That's just me. And uh, good luck on anybody that takes a chance on him. Maybe he's a, you know, a cheap uh, piece of American cheese. Okay. So enjoy that American cheese or whatever it is. Uh, make sure that it's yellow because I don't like that white American cheese. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think I think I think I think they're overshooting. I, no, I do. I think they're overshooting the, the first round pick. I don't, I don't know if he's first round material. No, uh, he's so, a, he could be a second round draft pick. He could. Yeah, he could be a second round yeah. draft pick. Yeah, and maybe he turns out to be a good. I just don't think he has it. I I, I think personally, personally, I think it's I as a quarterback, and I'm not a quarterback, so I have never played quarterback. I did play corner. I was a wide receiver, and I never played in Division One. I. I was a pretty good hockey player so i know what it takes to be great okay hard work and dedication and and realize being a leader and taking responsibility and that's something that he doesn't do a very good job of and that has a lot to do with deon sanders because if you don't remember deon sanders when he played for the cowboys when, at the end of his cowboys career who was he blaming and you know, pointing fingers at he wasn't pointing fingers at himself he was pointing fingers at the coaching the quarterback play and how old we are and uh you know it's time to go you know so uh, yeah. Deion Sanders, as much as I respect him as a player, and I do, for all the fans out there that think that I'm a racist and I hate him, I do not hate Deion Sanders. I actually love him. When you take the responsibility to go out there and be the coach of boys, like you said, not men, and teach them the right way of handling things, you're not doing it. You're not. And you know, Jason, you are a coach. You're yes. you're out there and you're you're doing the best that you possibly can and letting them learn the discipline and understanding the game so they can be better pros or they can be better fathers and sons when they get out of school. He's not doing it. I'm sorry. It, it's not selling me and losing and then pointing fingers. That doesn't make any sense either. It shows me that he's a sore loser. So, and, and losing is, is part of the game as we all know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what you're saying, what I'm understanding is you think, Dion has been allowing this to be, happen probably mm -hmm. all his life. And so, mm -hmm. you know, why would he act any different? Mm -hmm. This is what he's he's known. Mm -hmm. So you never had to really take responsibility for anything. And I've heard him say, like, you know, he's the guy. He's the dude, right? Because that's what Dion says. He always says you're doing. He's the guy. He's the one. Okay. Well, coach him up, coach. But also, being a father, teach him what he's supposed to do. His responsibility. So I agree with it. I mean, we got a huge responsibility as coaches, man, to make sure kids are acting the way they're supposed to act, right? Carry themselves the way they're supposed to carry themselves. And it is about accountability and responsibility. It is about those things. And so those values, man, translate not just on the field, but off the field too, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just, no, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you. I'm just, I, I just look at the game and I, I'm, listen, I'm not a coach and I, I'm, I'm a sports guy. I sit here and there are things that I look at and I understand people don't like what I have to say. And I hope they hate me because in this business, 
it's better to be hated than loved. But I speak the truth. Uh, it, just because I'm a fan of a team, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, the Jets will play better next year. They'll play better this. They'll play." I, I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, okay. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Deion Sanders is doing the right thing and, and helping his sons or even the future of some of these kids in, in Henry, who I think is going to be a stud in the NFL, a stud in yeah, the NFL. Yeah. And and him come out and, and say, you know, well, you know, it, it losing is for losers and winning is for winners. Uh, that doesn't sell to me. And if I'm a parent and I want my kid to go and play for Deion Sanders, I don't want to hear that from his mouth. I want to say, you know what? I'm going to teach these boys how to win, but also be good, sore losers. Absolutely. Now, well said. Well said. Sometimes you start hear these guys when they leave from Colorado that these things come out or maybe how they was treated or, you know, maybe they were just like shown the door, you know, with, with no type of respect, you know, so I, I, I don't know, man. I, I just know right now Colorado is struggling. Somehow they got to do something to right the ship. And the only one that's going to be able to do it, well, actually there's two people that can do it. It's Dion and his son. So he's got a great staff, man. Those guys got to get together. I, and I hate to see it because you got NFL guys that's out there coaching and you can't get a, a team like Colorado to win. Come on. You know what I, you know what I do? Yeah, I, have, I have the best idea. You ready to hear this? Yeah. I would, I would, I would get Shakur Sanders – on the the middle, you know, the middle of the field on the 50 yard line, I'd bend him over and I'd say, OK, guys, who do you want him to who do you want to kick him in the ass? OK, I you could pick anybody on this team. You get one fresh kick in Shador's ass and I get uh-huh. the goal kicker and let him give him a n- nice little knocker, you know, and then, uh, you know, Shador maybe will open up his eyes and hopefully have his balls at the end of it, you know, so, <laughs> hey, actually, actually, what you can do, I'm telling you, this is a real thing. You can go in and team meeting, mm-hmm. tell everybody to blindfold themselves and say, hold your hand up if you want to kick him in his tail. <laughs> and I guarantee it'll be some hands going up. I promise you'll be some hands going up. So there's, like, there's another option, too. See, Deion Sanders, a couple months ago, or a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the, the taking NIL money from uh, Saudi Arabia, which, by the way, has uh, those leagues, those soccer leagues in Saudi Arabia are getting some uh, pretty good soccer players. Maybe we'll get one of them to do it. Oh. <laughs> Gas prices going down, baby. Thank you to Deion Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Deion, you are. He was the talk of this show. I mean, he has been great. We love Deion. And, and Jason. We love what you're doing right now in Kentucky State. We really appreciate the time. And by the way, we'd love to get you on again. We love to get you on. You were a great interview. You should do this. I think you could be really, really good uh, at analyzing things and stuff like that. You are fantastic. Uh, I, I and I'm not trying to blow your head up. Okay, I'm not trying to blow. It, even though if you want me to, I can. You know, I can. You know, pump it up. You know, I got some air. You know, a lot of it. Speedy's got a left, definitely a lot of air. No, 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 that's, brain, a, that, you know? that, that's the Patriots. They love to oh, pump air on oh, things. Yeah, true, too. I mean, well, it, actually, they like to deflate things. <laughs> well, look, we, we do a little bit of it, you know, with Chief Concerns, obviously, out there, man, doing our podcast, you know, and, and giving the people the kingdom, you know, uh, uh-huh. Chief's kingdom a little bit of what we what we know. And so we, we just pull the curtains back, talk to them a little bit. We like talking about truth, too. There's some things that, you know, we, we might say this a little contentious, but for us, man, uh, from a player's perspective, uh, I'm, I'm going to give them the real. I'm going to tell them exactly how things are done, what happens around, you know, behind the scene, mm-hmm. what coaches actually talk about, you know, what, you know, what coaches speak really is, you know, when they come out to the media, like, all oh, golly shucks. No, that's not what they mean. They mean something else totally different. You know, we can kind of get down to it. So, but it, it's been a blast, man. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to have to definitely come back. I'm going to definitely come back, man. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed well, it, man. We enjoy you, and and just make sure when you pull down the curtains, you make sure that Deshaun Watson's not hiding on the other side, okay? <laughs> <laughs> crazy. And crazy. Maybe, it's, maybe it's Robert Kraft. He could give you a couple mil. <laughs> oh, man. Goodness. Goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Jason Dunn, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Great interview, by the way. He's fantastic. He really is. I, I can't wait. Really you are. Appreciate it. Great. Really, really great. And I, I want you to come back on, by the way. Absolutely. Uh, during the football season. Uh, Ken State's very own. Kentucky, sorry. Kentucky State's very own. Jason Dunn. 
Round of applause, Speedy. Round of applause, Speedy. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it, boys. Let's get it. Get it done. Tom Brady, right. eat your heart oh, out. I see what you did there. Oh, what? that's right. Wow, you finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brothers, man. It was, it was all real, man. Look, y'all have a good night, okay? I'll check y'all later, man. Earl Speedy, man, it was a great time. All right, hey, y'all brothers, right, be good. Jason, all right. Jason, done. Done away. Dunner, as we all know, he's not done, but he's ready to be done.